Hello, and welcome to Athens, Georgia. My name is Reagan Jones, and I'm here tonight to take you on a filmic journey through Chris Tidwell's Avant Garden. Now, I hear some murmurs from those of you out in the audience asking yourself, well, what exactly is Chris Tidwell's Avant Garden? And well, I'm here to explain that, but before we get into that, I think we should ask yet another more important question. Who is Chris Tidwell? Chris Tidwell, um, to me, well, he plays the clarinet, and um, he's my teacher and my muse. Um, Mr. Tidwell is a sharp man in his intellect and his dress. <laughs> he's a good man. He's a good person to have a conversation with. I mean, as a philosophy major, I feel like he's quite interesting and has very interesting perspectives on things. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. Um, how would I explain Chris? Uh... I don't know. He's like goofy, but also like serious in like the best way. Um, I don't know. I always like hearing what he has to say about things. I don't know. I just, I can pretty much ask his opinion on anything and whatever he tells me, it's something that just did not occur to me. All right, Druva. I just heard the phrase, quote, Chris Tidwell as a social construct. I want your thoughts on that. Chris Tidwell is an idea. And I think that Van Doren Reeds should really look into sponsoring him. He's one of the best horn players I know. Um, he practices a lot. Alright. Alright. Is that pretty good? Yeah, that's good. That's good. So so tell me about your uh, your thoughts on Chris Tidwell as a person. I mean, Chris is pretty cool. Um, he dresses well. I mean, he's like open to having people at his house. Honestly, I think he's pretty nice to put on an event like this that attracts so many people and be uh, a coordinator for all the different acts. I think he's a really great guy. All right, so here we have uh, Chris Tidwell, the man responsible for all of these festivities here tonight. I wouldn't say that I'm, I'm totally responsible. There's been a lot of help, that's for sure. Um, I got the idea from just going to uh, different, uh, you know, other events kind of like this in, in this spirit, um, and uh, I'm trying to make it a different kind of angle, one that in, engages the audience, one that uh, brings people in to both talk uh, through music, talk through art, uh, and it's supposed to be a little bit more intimate than uh, what you're used to in certain parties. We've had great help from Sam Sam Fisher. It's been, uh, of course, Reagan. We got on the camera. Um, I mean, we have uh, tons of artists. We have Deer Eyes playing, and I'm just really excited to see how this goes. And this is just version one, so hopefully it it, it goes well and we can keep doing them. But yeah. Okay, well I gotta go do an interview. So no, I'm getting interviewed. I'll, I'll see you later, okay? Bye. Busy man, you know? Oh, I know. We're here with Sam Fisher himself. Sam, you were very involved in the planning of this evening. Can you tell us a little bit about uh, what you've been up to specifically? What was sort of your, your sections of the night? Yeah, so me, me and Chris talked about this whole whole party deal, but I really am honing on the kitchen. I'm in the garden. We say it's sort of have the Avant Garden is the name of it. So we went to a park today, uh, me and a friend, and we got collected moss. I brought two. I'll get them right here. We got two crates like this, and we basically layered moss all the way up on top and put that over the table to cover the table. So I have like all the teacups set into the table, like they're almost part of the garden, part of the tea. And then we have flowers, all sorts of flowers, eucalyptus, lavender. We just wanted to make it feel plants lively, relaxing, like a abode of uh, peace and natural feeling, good feelings in the in the in the garden, the tea garden. Yeah. Okay, um, um, this isn't my face. Why not? <laughs> okay, well, I'm in the wilderness. I think it's got something. So now I'm just mixing the tea, I'm mixing the flavors. You put the sugar, the mint, oversteep green. And uh, you gotta mix the flavors. So we're still mixing. What is this plan? Am I playing with you, Chris? Pretty 
pretty Ooh. sick, right? <laughs> Whoa. Why do you want any more? Dude, I love it when it glitches out. Yeah. Yeah. I'm I'm a rap producer. Oh, I, I sample shit, so I probably know more music than all you guys can buy. Oh, I'm, trying to oh. I'm not trying to be that guy, but so Chris, can you tell us a little bit about this room, the uh, the intent for this room here? People are painting pictures that they want to paint, and uh, nothing that they don't want to paint. And that's about that's about the whole story, because they want to do it, and they're going to do it. So are we sponsored by Flagpole? Or are we just... <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, new stuff to come? <laughs> Catch you later. <laughs> First off, I want to thank you for uh, agreeing to do this. Um, I, I want to ask you a few questions about your group. Okay. Um, first off, I want to know why you settled on um, Deer Eyes. We, we, we came up with the name in August, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm like really shitty at naming things, so Connor pretty much named like every song and us. Wow. Um, I did? It must be pretty embarrassing for you. Yeah, I mean, all of our music doesn't have any lyrics to it, so it's kind of hard to to betray think of like a name yeah to like, think of a name or like betray what exactly the meaning is of yeah. the song um did either of you come from musical families did you have a, a, a young influence <laughs> um i mean my dad put out like a cd in the early 90s like he played a lot in uh, myrtle beach when he was in the army um now he's in a, a covers duo and he's actually playing terrapin brewery tonight so i would say he had a major influence on me in that, like, I don't think I would have picked up guitar if I hadn't had, like, guitars laying around the house. My mom, I know, was in a punk band in college. Uh, she didn't play any of the instruments. She was just, like, the singer. You know how punk is, so she's just, like, yelling, screaming. It, it, I think the band was called, like, uh, The Bloody Mattresses from, like, Madison, Wisconsin, so... <laughs> I, was, I learned drums and stuff and like got interested in music though through like my cousins because they were they had a drum kit and I like fell in love with it bought my first kit when I was 10 for like 200 bucks it was real shitty but it worked and uh, from there I just like started expanding like and other stuff okay so we're gonna do some some one-on-one -on -one, uh, tough questions with your eyes now okay okay so um, Eli you yeah. you play guitar for the group I do um, you know, Connor handles more of the percussion, yes. um, and then you handle more of the, uh, the guitar work. But I guess I say that to say, um, do you think that there's a god and why? <laughs> no comments. <laughs> so I want us to talk a little bit about the concept of um, professional envy, uh, professional envy. particularly in regards to your peers. So if we're talking like, let's say, you know, I get kind of a cool haircut, I start making dreamy, chill, electronic music, 
and let's say it's better than yours. How does that make you feel? Are you upset about that? No, I'm not upset at all. Does that not bother I you? I think, no, because like, that means I like influenced someone in some way. So that means I had an effect on someone. That means like our music had an effect on people. And I think that's super rewarding. So no, I wouldn't be mad at that at all. Okay, so we gave Eli a little time to think it over and he says he's come to a conclusion about the whole God thing. So uh, Eli, hit us. Uh, I mean, I, I don't really know. Um, but I'd like to believe there is. I feel like, I don't know, that feels like a weight off my shoulders. Um, and then like things come crashing down when I, when I think about it too hard, you know? Like if there's not, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, all right. Thoughts on the concept of a higher power? Um, my gut answer says no higher power. This just kind of happened, like a bunch of rocks floating around space. The right combination of light, heat. Ooh, where'd the rocks come from, Will? <laughs> I don't know, I just think it just kind of happened. I don't know. So actually, I've been thinking about this fairly a lot recently. So I read this book by Chuck Klosterman called But What If We're Wrong? Which the premise of the book, he just takes a bunch of topics and says, okay, what if we as a society are fundamentally wrong about this big foundational topic? And one of them was the idea of living in a simulation, which I think is interesting. So the idea Chuck Klosterman puts forth is that if we get to the point where it technologically advanced enough, we can make a simulation. Eventually, the simulation is going to reach the point we were at when we made the simulation, and that simulation is going to start making simulations. Those simulations will make simulations. And, like, chances are, it's more likely we're in one of the infinite tendrils, trickle downs of simulations than we are the one original humanity that started it all. Which kind of is contradictory to my prior belief system of nothing happens for a reason, the universe is cold, uncaring, all that Camus, what have you, absurdism. So I've been kind of I've been kind of having that fun little dialogue within myself for the past couple months actually. Does that make sense? Uh do you believe in the concept of soulmates? It's another similarly uh, supernatural concept, or is it? Uh, it's interesting. Uh, like someone you're like predestined to be with at like birth or whatnot. Whatever it means to you. Um. Well, no, no. That's like I don't know. I also think the zodiac is a load of shit. Do you believe in soulmates? Uh, I'm a Sagittarius, so like. <laughs> that's a hard one. <laughs> um. I don't know, soulmates, that's not a concept. Like, your soulmate is whoever you happen to find in life, like, out of random chance, and that's the person who you decide, like, you love. But, like, it's not some predestined thing or anything like that. So it's just just the natural world, It's then. just random, a Everything random occurrence. Is. Everything's random. You, me, the stars, that street lamp, all random. You know what? Yeah, yeah, I believe in soulmates. Because uh, everyone develops in like such a unique, independent way that you can't really say for sure that like, uh, you know, one person that you are with, you can find someone just like that, you know, because everyone's just so different and u unique. So if you, I'm sure there's someone out there just like, I guess statistically would be like the perfect match for you. So, um, yeah. I believe that there is a soulmate. I'm not sure. I'm not, I can't guarantee that everyone will find their soulmate, but I'm always hopeful for everyone. <laughs> our, our dear friend Will Morris has stated that uh, he thinks it's quite possible that we're residing in a simulation. You know what? That's the T, okay? I think in a sense, I like to say that because then it takes away the blame from any mistakes that I make. But you know what? Yeah, sure. We're in a simulation. Alright, so you got people that are going to say, okay, we're living in a simulation, then nothing matters. I can do whatever I want. I can go, you know, stab the person in the street. It's a simulation. Nothing matters. No! It's still my responsibility to, like, you know, not be horrible even though the world isn't real. If it's not, I'm not certain. Claire, you got a response? Will Morris or Will Wise? Do you 
think that this uh, kind of party might take off, you know, as a sort of a different a different take on I, a night out with friends, you yeah, know? I hope. I hope this is like, instead of just, I feel like I went to a party and a couple weeks ago and I was just loud. It was like disrespectful to like the people themselves almost, just like loud. The music was loud. People don't listen to the music. They're just like, ah, blah, blah, blah. I don't know. People weren't drinking tea. Um, but this is really cool because we have multiple different fronts and like stimulus, stimuli going on. We got, we got door opening. Cam, what's up? Hey. What's going on out here? So we're getting a little, we're doing a little interview here. Interview about, tell, them, tell them about the party. Why don't you uh, introduce yourself yeah. and tell us what you're adding to the party tonight. Um, hey, I'm Tim and right now I'm just an observer. I, I just entered this wonderland and there's so much to explore here. It's Isn't it like, beautiful? It's not like room sensory, like, whoa, what's going on here? Whoa. Yeah. It's a wonderland of imagination and if you have a dream, it can come true here. That's what I that, think. That's right, yeah. Yeah, and we like that. You know, I'm not archetypally much of an art student person, so I feel like I'm not fully getting everything that I could out of it, but I'm like actively trying to figure out what's going on, so I hope by the end of the night. Everyone, I dig everyone's enthusiasm about it. Tea room is probably my favorite part so far. I, uh, I live for that weird, like, avant-garde, makes no sense, newspaper on the floor, painting the walls. I'm there for it, man. The dry atmosphere, I mean, I personally, I don't like drink or smoke or anything because I am lame. And uh, <laughs> usually parties when everyone's like, you know, going at it, really getting sloshed on the other sober on there, it's like, oh, I don't know what to do. But it's, it's, it's nice just kind of hanging out with a bunch of people and just chilling. It's a nice wholesome time. <laughs> tell me tell me about your decision to uh, typically go dry at events like this. I mean, like, do you actually want me to say why I Yeah, I think it's interesting. And I think, I think the, the general part of this documentary is like, you oh, know. It's a real documentary? It, yeah, oh, about cool. this party. Right, all right, cool. About Sick. this one night. Fantastic. And about the concept of, you know, having a good time, uh, but being, uh, you know, doing it based on creativity and uh, socialization yeah, rather than, you okay. know, substances. Yeah, so all, I feel like that jokes, would be a... All a, jokes aside, I right. think that's fantastic. I really do love that. I don't drink or anything just because it's it's just not my thing. I mean, I'm a pretty anxious dude, and those things just kind of compound my anxiety by not being as in control, being you know the only straight kid, straight edge kid at the function is always a little uncomfortable. So it's like wow, I just kind of feel apart. But then this is nice because you're all in the same space, you're all in the same headspace, same state of mind. You're just hanging out, enjoying each other's company and art. It's just a good time. you're doing here so I'm thinking about like emojis sure yeah so I drew a boy a smiley face you zoom in on that that's that's pretty impressive and then now I'm drawing a girl with a sad face that's actually amazing well, thank like you. seriously but I guess this one's a self-portrait oh fantastic yeah the colors yeah I've been using I was pretty skeptical about this at first, which is interesting as someone who literally like helped conceptualize this evening, but it actually turned out really well and it was kind of a nice change because it wasn't just a bunch of chaos. <laughs> Our dear eyes, this is our uh, first performance ever. Woo! We're kind of nervous, uh, we'll see how it goes.
came out was very nice. Um, if there were any problems, I didn't know about them, but hopefully if there were any, people were able to talk to Chris or someone else running it. I think it was a great, chill event, and there was a lot of arts involved.